NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, have embarked on a joint program to explore Mars in the coming decades and selected the five science instruments for the first mission. The ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, scheduled to launch in 2016, is the first of three joint robotic missions to the Red Planet. It will study the chemical makeup of the Martian atmosphere with a 1,000-fold increase in sensitivity over previous Mars orbiters. The mission will focus on trace gases, including methane, which could potentially be geochemical or biological in origin and be indicators for the existence of life on Mars. The mission also will serve as an additional communications relay for Mars surface missions beginning in 2018. We've been in the space business for 50 years. Uh, the simple stuff has been done. You know, missions don't cost $50 million anymore because you can't do much for $50 million. Uh, missions tend to cost uh, half a billion, a billion, or even billions of dollars to do the kind of world-class science that uh, NASA is known to do and that the American people expect us to do. Uh, you know, we've flown by planets a long time ago. Voyager did that. We're in the process of orbiting planets and landing on planets and roving on planets. That costs a little bit more than a few dollars. Uh, the trouble is we also have an ec economic situation in the world that's not exactly conducive to a lot of extra money for science. Uh, recognizing missions cost a lot more to do the best science and to the economic situation isn't the best it could be. Uh, it's time for us to stop competing with our major partners like the Europeans and start working together. Mars has the raw materials to keep astronauts going for a long time. It's got, it's got ice. Why is ice important? Well, ice turns into water for drinking. Ice is made out of H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen makes a great rocket fuel, and oxygen is the kind of stuff you like to breathe. So the raw materials to support a human expedition to Mars are there. But before we go there, we need a map, and we also need to make sure what Mars is made out of. Are there any toxins there? Is there any biology there we have to worry about? And the only way to do that really well is to go there and do a robotic sample return mission. Mars is probably the most likely place in the solar system, other than the Earth, for life to evolve at some point in time. Uh, it was wet, it had standing water, it has organic material, it has energy, it's got all the ingredients for life, and there may have been life there sometime. Now, it might have only been you know, a bacteria type of life, but uh, it's important to find out because if the very first place we look for life in depth, we find it or find fossil evidence of it, that has profound implications for a universe that has, as we know now, hundreds if not thousands if not billions of planets out there, and it says something about the possibilities of life in the universe. The driving reason behind an ESA-NASA collaboration is to build our capabilities to, to return samples from Mars in the 2020s. That's a complicated series of missions. It's not a single mission. We call it a campaign because it could cover two or maybe three launch opportunities to be able to set the infrastructure on the surface of the planet, get the samples back off of the planet, and return those to Earth safely. That's the driving goal for this broad collaboration, is the ability to do that in an international context. Frankly, the science 
of that could be very paradigm changing science and, and the, my personal opinion is this needs to be an international collaboration because we may change paradigms around the world with what we find out from that mission. The prices and costs of things continue to increase. Just inflation erodes our buying power and that's true around the world for whether you're buying a refrigerator, whether you're buying a new car, whether you're buying you know, a jetliner for an airplane company or whether you're buying spacecraft and launch vehicles. So as time goes on, our budgets tend not to keep up with the inflation rates. So the missions we can fly either become smaller or they become less frequent. That was the case for both ESA and for NASA with Mars. That as time went on, then these missions, when you go to the surface of another planet, become especially challenging cost-wise as well as technically. So by merging, we are keeping a very vibrant program in place that will allow us to go to Mars on every opportunity, which essentially is a planetary alignment between Mars and Earth is optimum every 26 months. Makes the trip much shorter, makes it easier to get to, uh, and so we like to go on those opportunities. This kind of a collaboration allows us to do that on essentially every opportunity, as long as we want to do that. Um, I'm not certain that anybody as a single space agency actually could do the uh, Mars sample return campaign by itself. It's complicated, um, it's expensive, uh, and I think you really need this to be an international collaboration to make it a viable mission. So to be able to do Mars sample return in a highly collaborative fashion, it's very important to get used to working with each other. Uh, so that's what the 2016 and the 2018 missions are really about, is a large-scale collaboration where we're essentially in each other's knickers as far as we're dependent on them and they're dependent on us, which creates a very different dynamic uh, than we typically deal with if we're only getting a single instrument here or providing them a single instrument there. Uh, in fact, if things go the way we want them to go and the way the, the U.S. science community, I believe, wants to go, the 2018 mission actually may cache the samples, in other words, collect them and put them in canisters um, for the sample return mission that would go retrieve those in the 2020s. So the 18 mission could be a very, very large scale, very exciting mission and set the science pace for Mars for a decade or more. Also leads directly into human exploration of the planet. I don't think we can send humans to Mars without actually understanding the details of dust characteristics, toxicity of the soils. Is there something alive in that soil that's a threat to our astronauts? Mars sample return is almost mandatory before you send humans to the planet. This will get us kicked off on that as well.